Come on, folks. <laughs> Let's have some real honest to goodness old fashioned rejoicing here, huh? Come on. You can tell this man has been through serious angst in his life. He's had many failures and disappointments in his life, but he's managed to make this hilarious version of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I have traveled far and wide here of the broad, but I've never seen anything remotely as revolting as my show. <laughs> the shock value wasn't some kind of like punk or beat or anything like that, but going way back to the original shocker guys from, you know, you know, Salvador Dali. Sometimes I'm called the black pope of the church of Satan, but frankly, I feel more like Winnie the Pooh. It's putting out there the truth as you see it, and there's no higher way to do art. A change has come over the world like a cloud. Dark thoughts are born. Dark, Dark deeds, deeds ripen in the midst of its vapors. The eye of God no longer shines on us. Where once it shone, there is nothing now but an empty, burned-out socket. God is dead, but the devil is not. He created you! In his own image, he runs the show. Our graveyards are riddled with corpses. Our mortality rate is 100%. Did you say you have a poem you want to share? I learned it in Germany when I was 12 years old. Like you would remember, Enem in a mink man, clink, clang, ooze, pooze, bakadi, aya, baya, wax. You might remember that also. Can you do me a great favor? Will you please pretend to listen to me? Sure. Es gibt zwei Sorten Ratten. Die Hungrigen und die Satten. Die Satten bleiben vergnügt zu Haus. Die Hungrigen aber wandern aus. Sie wandern viel tausend Meilen, ganz und rasten und weilen. All your life up to that point, you had lived with a silver spoon in your mouth, so to speak? With a golden spoon in my mouth. Golden spoon? Yes. You were that wealthy? Yes. Yeah. Not I, my family. The, fam the family? Yes. yes. They produced about 20 or so different fashion magazines, maybe 30 different fashion magazines, that went throughout Europe. And it was all women's fashions. I lived in Germany before Hitler came to power, and I was, uh, at that time, the son and grandson of very, very wealthy people. All the great people of the time came to visit them in, that, in their mansion. Einstein was a frequent guest in Theodore's parents' house. And um, Einstein and uh, Theodore played chess together. Einstein was a very close friend of my parents, mm -hmm. uh, especially a very close friend of my mother for about 25 years. And uh, he lived in our home in Dusseldorf for three months as our house guest. The stories he would tell me about Einstein is that Einstein had an affair with his mother. He said 27 years. 
I wanted to say that I was the son of two large fortunes, very, very rich. If somebody asked me, you want to be dead forever and ever and ever, you want to live your life all over again, I would say, no, dead forever, because uh, the ratio of my happiness towards my unhappiness is probably 99 to 1 percent. I was a very unhappy man at the time, and often after nightfall I would stroll about all alone, lost in thought, through those bizarre and melancholy quarters. You are always by yourself, Theodore. <laughs> you shouldn't be alone so much. <laughs> Here's a guy who was raised, you know, knowing classical Greek and Latin, who spoke French and German and English as well, who had an experience as a, as a top chess player, who, who hung out in Paris in the 20s, Berlin in the 20s. He, he spoke of his playboy years and, you know, in, in Berlin, riding motorcycles and sitting in cafes and playing chess. Yes, I was a playboy. I intended to be a playboy. But alas, my parents and my entire family were annihilated. I was in the concentration camp mm -hmm. and when I came to the United States I was a playboy no more. He was a guy who was brought up to be rich and then he wasn't. So under normal conditions Theodore would be a one of the richest men in the world if there had been no Second World War. Isn't that amazing? He and I once went to see the Blue Angel. We left the theater after it was over with, you know, and it was the first time I ever saw him cry. But he says, I'll never forget Oliver. I was walking with my, my girlfriend arm in arm, uh, coming out of the Blue Angel, and one Hitler youth came to me with a, a leaflet, and I just said, get out of there. Get away from me. Get out. But he says, I treated him like he was a mosquito. He failed to recognize there was any threat. Well, he thought he was a, not a Jew, but a German. From what he said, he was one of the first, you know, to go to Dachau. And um, I think it was before they had the, you know, the extermination. He said when he was being signed in to Dachau, um, the person who was signing him in was somebody from his high school class. Blessed are those who do not know and cannot think. I envy you folks, I honestly do. I would rather be a contented pinworm than a tormented brother Theodore. But I'm afraid I have no choice in the matter. I see too deep. I see too much. I see too much. I have gazed. I have gazed into the abyss. Into the abyss and the abyss has gazed into me. And neither of us liked what we saw. The, in the concentration camp, all your time you spend to see that you will not be killed in two seconds. You had no time. A physician would say, who are you? He says, I'm a doctor. And the Nazi would come in and shoot him in the head. He says, you abortionist. And the next guy would say, who are you? He says, I'm a lawyer. You shasta. He'd shoot him in the head. Yeah. And they came up to Theodore and said, who are you? The thief says, I'm, I'm swine, I'm dirt, I'm filth. The guy says, good, uh, you live. So he had this kind of dramatic sense in him like that, and that saved him either from getting beaten up or worse at that point. He uh, had to tell them exactly what they wanted to hear. A Nazi came and, and said, now you die. And I said, don't you see I'm working for the German fatherland here? Du Schweinehund, halt dein Maul! He stopped for a second and shot the next two and let me live. We think we act, but we are always acted upon. 
we think we think, but our thoughts are always imposed on us. We are driven by urges and passions we do not choose or understand. An alien, incomprehensible power injects them into our heart without asking for our consent. An alien, incomprehensible power pulls our strings. We are puppets. We are puppets in the hands of an insane puppeteer.